Please stand for the opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from 1 Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, 
These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gilgal and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The proper psalm appointed for the second Sunday after Pentecost is Psalm 138. We will read responsibly by the whole verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The, the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that the grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we do not look at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one who can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent him to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> Does that happen with you with these things on? <laughs> Most people think great God will come from the skies, take away everything and make everybody feel high. But if you know what life is worth, you will look for yours on earth. And now you see the light. You stand up for the rights, yeah. Anyone remember what song that is? Get Up, Stand Up by Peter Tosh and Bob Marley. Now, you know I used a Bob Marley song last week as well, so I guess this is Bob Marley month. Last week was One Love, One Heart. This one is Get Up, Stand Up, Stand Up for Your right, Rights, Don't Give Up the Fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We really have two stories in the gospel today. It was a common literary tool of the author Mark to have two interweaving stories, really layered one on top of the other, though. The first one is that Jesus' family was trying to forcibly remove him from what he was doing and what he was saying. I don't know if anyone picked up on that in the scriptures today. The second one was that the religious authorities were trying to remove Jesus, or at least trap him, keep him from standing and speaking up for what was right. So let me back up a little bit. From the very beginning of Jesus' work in the world, he seemed to be getting into trouble all the time. He was breaking the commandments instead of trying to focus on what the, or at least breaking 
the authority's view of the commandments. Let me put it that way. Instead of trying to focus people on what the whole point of the commandments were about, he, along with his followers, worked on the Sabbath at one point. They went out into the fields and began to pick grain, which was an absolute no-no on the Sabbath. Couldn't do any farming. You couldn't do any work, as you, many of you may remember. Trouble for Jesus. He also started to perform miraculous actions on the Sabbath. He healed a paralyzed person. He healed someone with leprosy, someone with a fever that wouldn't go away. He even drove out an evil spirit from one person. Trouble, trouble, trouble. That's what followed Jesus everywhere. Many people loved him and loved his message, and the crowds grew quickly. In fact, it says that uh, there was such a mob that they couldn't even eat. Imagine that. Other people, including his family, thought he was crazy, and they tried to stop him. Mark tells us, when his family heard it, they went out to restrain Jesus, for people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. Then we immediately leave that storyline for a moment, and we go to the second one. The scribes, the heads of the church, come down from Jerusalem accusing Jesus of following Satan himself, Beelzebul, or Lord of the Flies, Lord of the Flying Demons. They thought he was filled with bad action, bad message, and evil work. Incidentally, does anyone remember what Jesus' central message was through in, throughout his entire work in the world when he was down here? The one that he would not sway from ever. We remind each other of it all the time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, or with your entire being. Love all people, and be sure to love yourself as well. Everything else, every commandment stems from these two or three great commandments, really. And yet the authorities still wanted to stop him. He had become overly popular. Masses of people were following him. He was uh, creating a fear in many of the people who were in authority. And yet, when confronted by opposition, Jesus continued his message and life of love and healing and compassion for the poor. And that's poor in spirit, that's poor financially, poor emotionally, physically, poor in whatever way people defined as poor. That's who he was there for. His message, get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight for this central message that he's trying to get through. Don't give up the message if your family tries to stop you. And don't give up the message if your, ch if your church tries to stop you. Can you imagine? It would be like me going to the bishop and saying, Scoot, go on your way. You're off base here. I'm sure the bishop... I'm sure I would not last long in my position if I did that. And that's what Jesus was doing, fishing around, saying, okay, fight for the sake of love. Or as Bono from U2 sang in his song, Pride, in the name of love. What more in the name of love? Can you tell I'm dating myself with the music? <laughs> A complete side note, but doesn't it seem odd to you that we have so many National Observance Days. This week there was National Donut Day. Anyone catch that one? Of course, we all know that every day ought to be National Donut Day. I decided to Google January 6th, since that is today, and here's some of the special observances that are happening today. National Eyewear Day, National Gardening Exercise Day. Thanks for being in church, everyone. National Yo-Yo Day. Drive-In Movie Day, and of course, the grand celebration of National Applesauce Cake Day. That is today. But today is also National Cancer Survivors Day. Don't you think every day should be National Cancer Survivors Day? Trying to build up support and prayer for those people that fight that horrible battle. As many of you know, this is Gay Pride Month. Every month really ought to be Gay Pride Month, right? Supporting people in love. It's a month when we particularly remind ourselves to love everyone, 
not just some. The picnic is on Saturday, June 18th, by the way, in Lions Park. One picnic? We should have a picnic every day. And the Episcopal Church, St. Mark's, welcomes you, by the way. Don't even get me started with Mother's Day and Father's Day. <laughs> One day. That said, I still like it when my family uh, always asks me, well, it's Father's Day. What do you want to do today? <laughs> but I digress. Every day should be stand up, speak up day. Now back to our story. When confronted by the authorities, Jesus took charge of the situation and called the authorities together. He offered a parable, a metaphoric speech that often includes riddles and proverbs, short narratives that illustrate and try and make a point, a teaching. And here he uh, basically turns the tables on the religious authorities uh, by showing them, gosh, any intelligent person should recognize the absurdity of your view of what you're saying today. He didn't literally say that, but in the parable, that's what he is saying. Another side note, but that technique was very common and still is common within Judaism, actually. It's a beautiful thing in a way. They would have, and they do have, theological conversations with each other, pointing out different angles, different perspectives of God and humanity and ethics, even valuing the diversity of thoughtful, prayerful people. And hopefully in the end, they would discern the will of God through those conversations. However, the process of discernment was as important as the outcome, even if the outcome was that there would be no outcome. Only God knows in circum cer certain circumstances. Jesus continues to speak with the religious authorities. Imagine if we did that regularly and just respected people who absolutely differed from us. And, you know, and what would they would do is they'd, they'd sit down, a dozen of them, and they'd say, well, I think God thinks this way and this way. And another one would say, yeah, but really God thinks this way and this way. Well, let's look to the scriptures. Well, the scriptures say this. And another person would say, yeah, but the scriptures say this as well. And somehow in that discussion, they would come to some sort of understanding. Well, Jesus is using some of this technique. So they just accused him of following the demons, right? And Jesus comes back and says, well, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, it cannot stand. If a house is divided, it won't stand. If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. And next, Jesus proposes a counter image of robbing a strong man. So stay with me here. Verse 27 says, but no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. The only way to seize the goods of a powerful person is for someone stronger to tie them up. The example demonstrates the strength of the parable as metaphor. Jesus speaks indirectly about his own activities. He is no agent of Satan. He instead demonstrates that demonic powers are being broken up. Jesus is stronger than Satan and is able to bind Satan and raid his kingdom. And now Jesus shifts in another way in his teaching, basically charging his opponents of being blasphemers or speaking against God. Again, these are the religious authorities of the time that he's talking to. They're treating the spirit of God as a satanic spirit or right back in your face, basically. He says that anyone who cuts themselves off from God, from the power of the Holy Spirit, cuts, cuts themselves off from God. God doesn't force himself on us. He doesn't force his forgiveness or his love. He offers it to us. And if we don't accept that love and don't accept that forgiveness, we're sort of left off by ourselves then, which is a horrible thing. It's an eternal sin, if you will, if we reject God, we, if we reject the way of love. And if we rely on God for, for forgiveness and love, then we're not cutting ourselves off from forgiveness and love. That's basically what he's saying here. And finally, remember how I said there's two stories. So Jesus starts off talking about his parents, his family, 
And then he talks about this other thing. Now Jesus is coming back again to talking about his family. And he says his mothers and brothers and sisters had arrived. His father had probably died by this point, which is why he wasn't mentioned. And the crowd told Jesus that his family was outside. Now in this storyline of Mark, he is, uh, he's making the point here that outside is not just outside the door, but he's making the point that the family is outside of the way of love, that they're not choosing that way of the Lord to go. And so they say the family's outside. It's a message that they're not supporting Jesus or his actions. They were instead there to remove him, but remove him they did not. In fact, Jesus basically said, those who want to follow the way of love, follow doing God's will. That is my family. Translation, in the name of love, get up, stand up, and don't give up the fight. Amen. And now let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed can be found in your bulletins on page three at the bottom or in the Book of Common Prayer. And let us proclaim it together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now continue with the prayers of the people found on page four of your bulletins. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Paul Gordon, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. 
pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We pray for St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Saratoga, and we pray for the Diocese of Chelmsford in England. Your own prayers and petitions may be added at this time. Heavenly Father, and you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. After a moment of silence, let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace. And as you finish the peace, you're welcome to be seated. Um, and welcome to all of you on this Sunday morning. We're pleased that you've joined us both here and online as well. Um, if you're a guest or a visitor, we're especially glad that you're here. And I would ask if, uh, if you're here in the pews to fill out a welcome card. It can be found in the front of each pew. And at the end of the service, you're welcome to put those cards in the prayer basket in the back of the church as you leave. Uh, if you're at home, feel free to call into the church, give us your information and uh, feel free to ask any questions that you may have as well. So, uh, but we're happy that you're here and have joined us. Here comes the kids. Come on in. A um, couple other things. One, you'll notice that we've been changing uh, our protocols, sort of uh, undoing some of those protocols, as has been the rest of our culture um, over the weeks. And so... Uh, starting this week, we're going to make masks optional for people, but still keep distancing between pews. Um, and we will absolutely support people wearing masks and people not wearing masks. And so, uh, so you can start that discernment yourself if you haven't already, but we'll move towards that this week. Uh, we also have a number of other things. We can come to the altar now to receive communion. We actually have coffee upstairs if anyone wants any coffee as well. Uh, so people can do that. If you're a, a person that has sanitized over the last year and a half, you don't have to sanitize the pews anymore. Um, and so, so that's good news as well. But um, so we're making lots of, lots of changes. A couple other things we have. We're bringing back Teze, which is a meditation service of light and, and quiet and scripture and singing. That'll start back in July, so look for more details of that. We have our Yoga Eucharist that's happening once a month. Yeah, that's right, Yoga Eucharist right here in the sanctuary. It's very cool. June 22nd is the next one at 5.30. And then on this Tuesday, we have our 20-minute uh, Bell Garden Eucharist, which is right outside there at six o'clock. So come by for that. It involves uh, sidewalk chalk and communion and literally ringing our bell out there, which is really fun. So 
uh, be sure you come to that. Uh, Matt Carlos is our new videographer. There you go, Matt. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. He's working the scene, uh, chatting with people, and he said, yeah, there are all the praying hands and everything. Like, cool. <laughs> so glad to have you on board, Matt. Good to have you here. Mm -hmm. And then we have our peanut butter here, uh, the first Sunday of every month. Uh, we bless the peanut butter before it goes out to Needs, our local food bank. And so uh, let's offer a blessing upon this food. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this peanut butter. I thank you for the hands that provided it. Lord, we thank you for the people that will receive it. And may they all know that Christ is alive and there for them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have been designated as the peanut butter church by needs. Um, there are other churches that are like the tuna fish church. And uh, so that's why we always do peanut butter. Okay, are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? And if so, please come forward at this time. And as they do, <clears throat> if you could turn in your bulletins to the birthday anniversary blessing on page five of your bulletins, page five, at the top, and let us pray it together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is this an anniversary? Or how many years? 36 years. 36 years. That's pretty cool. I won't ask your age. <laughs> Lynn is here in spirit. Oh, and Lynn is here in spirit. Good. Wonderful. Uh, you've been married 58 years, and Lynn is here in spirit. Uh, Larry said, oh, beautiful. 58 years. There you go. You know I'm only 54, don't you? So there you go. Anyway, blessings to all of you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, this offering and sacrifice to God. Um, we don't pass around the plate right now. We have a basket in the back for offerings. So as you leave today, feel free to put your offering there. Instead, we have Mark Taylor Christie here to offer this beautiful gift of of offering, and of course, Dana that continues to offer beautiful music um, today as well. So, blessings.
please stand. Our offertory words are on page five of your bulletin. And, uh, let's give thanks. All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give up thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners. He healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Mark and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. At the direction of the ushers, you'll be invited to come forward to the altar rail to receive communion. Um, and afterwards, if you'd like to remain in your pews, you're welcome to do that, and we'll come down and bring communion down to you. However, you are welcome, all of you are. And if you'd like to receive communion, we'd ask that you put one hand over the other. That will cue us that you'd like communion. Or if you'd like to receive a blessing only, um, place both of your arms over your chest when you come forward, and we'll offer you a blessing. But again, you are welcome.
The service of Holy Eucharist now continues with the post-communion prayer. It can be found on page six of your bulletins. Page six. And let us pray it together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. reminder before the dismissal to, uh, you'll just be dismissing yourselves um, as you'd like, but try to remain somewhat distant from each other. Um, also, there's coffee upstairs if you want to join us, and I'll be greeting people outside. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.